The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, this is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. Today I'm doing a very special uh, interview with two people that I love and are friends of ours. This is Mayor Joe Kelsey. Good to see you again, Patty. Uh, Woodburn. And this is Monica Kelsey, his wife of Woodburn as well. Good to see you. Hi, good to see you too. My goodness, I have a lot of questions for you. It's the last time I saw you was back in December. Uh, it was November. Or, yeah. November? It was November. Wow. Anyways, in 2018. So now it's April. 2019. 2019. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what has transpired since last year for Safe ba Haven Baby Boxes? What is well, one of the most uh, exciting things that have happened in the last few months is we've had, uh, just in Indiana, uh, we had a baby in Kosciuszko County surrendered. We had a baby uh, a week later surrendered in Whitley County, and then we had another baby surrendered in Allen County, and these are all in Indiana. Yeah. And all, it, it, surprisingly, all of these cities and these counties have our billboards up. And that's prevalent because the hotline is on these, you know, these billboards yeah. and these women are calling and we're giving them options and they're taking these options. So it's a good thing. Thank God you have put these billboards up. Yes. Well, you know, a lot of right to life organizations actually donate them for us. They, oh, that's uh, really yeah, good. That's yeah, I asked about that. yeah. Allen yeah. County Right to Life did a, uh, a billboard campaign for us, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, North Central Indiana Rights of Life uh, is doing billboards in Whitley and Kosciuszko County. Uh, and that helps out us out tremendously because that's a huge expense of ours. Um, so, but they're working. They're definitely working. How long did this uh, Safe Haven Baby Boxes get accepted? Gone through the Senate and everything like that? How long did it take to finally get, take root and expand? Well, we're still. Are you still? We're still expanding, yeah. Right now, we're currently um, legal to operate in four states, mm -hmm. and we have uh, baby boxes in two of those states, and we're getting ready to launch in uh, one of the other states. Um, it's, a, it's a task, though, just to get this to fruit. Um, we have to contact a fire department or a hospital in an area that needs one of these boxes because of abandonments in their counties. Um, and then we have to find the funding for it, and then we have to train the first responders, and then we have to train the 911, and then we have to train the police officers, and then that's we have to a, install the box. That's you know, a lot of work. It's a, it, it usually takes anywhere from, I'm going to say, three to six months um, to fully get a box operational. Anytime before that, um, we would be rushing it. Is it just fire uh, stations or where else? Fire stations it? and hospitals. And hospitals. So, how, are you trying to get throughout the whole country? We will be within the whole country. I am absolutely 100% positive of this. Yes. Um, and we're not, Joe and I are not going to stop until that happens because the more we're out there educating, the more women are aware of this law. Yeah. And, um, and it's available for them. You have emergency numbers. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to put them on the screen. What are they? It's 1 99 baby one and that's our hotline. That's what we call our workhorse because that's who we we rely on the most to get the information, the accurate information to the women who call. Mm -hmm. We actually had a call this morning. Oh. Um, yeah, out of another state. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the first thing we have to do is where are you at? Mm -hmm. What state are you in? Mm -hmm. Because we have to uh, figure out what is legal in their state. 
Um, we have 50 states in this country and every state has a different law for the safe haven law. Really? So yeah, you know, so some of these states are, you know, they can surrender up to three days. Some states are 30 days. Some, we have one state that's a year. So knowing the law for them is critical. So we have to make sure that we're getting the correct information to them. And, um, uh, it is a task, but the the uh, 800 number literally um, has been doing amazing things. I mean, that literally is the, the workhorse of our organization, and a lot of women and men are... are and men. And men. Definitely. Yeah, and men um, are, are getting information and making good choices. Is it just that one number? Is there others... That's the, if a woman in crisis is, or a man in crisis needs us, that's the number to call. Say it again. 1-866-99-BABY-1. You can also go to Google and just search uh, Safe Haven Baby Boxes, and it will come up on there as well. Yeah, I just heard recently that a young baby girl, was that her, that was found in a place where a homeless man found her? Yeah. Yes. Um, that's a, a horrible, you know, horrible story, which is common though. Yeah. Um, as horrible as it sounds, this happens about 150 times a year just in the United States. That's not including other countries. We have um, some countries, Ghana, India, South Africa, they're finding a baby a day. Oh boy. A baby a day. Why? It, that's the question. That's the million dollar question, Patty. Uh, I can't logically think this out. I mean, is, is, is it fear? Is it lack of compassion? I don't feel that a woman who can carry a child for nine months mm -hmm. does not feel something for that child. I don't believe it. So maybe someone forced her? Trafficked victims. Uh, scared victims right. you know um, we just recently had an 18 year old that was found down in Texas that had abandoned and killed her child uh -oh. and this this 18 year old you have to ask yourself why did she feel that this was her only option and um, no one knew she was pregnant and that's very common so we have to make sure that the women and men of this country know their options before they get into this situation because when they get into this situation they're in crisis mode. They're just doing anything Panic. to continue, yeah, yeah continue Crush. to hide the pregnancy. So we have to make sure that these women understand that if you dump your child in a dumpster, you will go to prison. But if you take your child to a fire station and hand it to a worker and walk away, you walk away forever. Did that 18 year old girl, did she get arrested? Did she you? has been arrested. Okay. This child was, was dead. So, a full-term six-pound little girl. So. Uh, you have many volunteers. We have a lot of volunteers. Throughout how many states? We, oh, I don't even know. We, I have somebody that actually takes care of the volunteers and makes sure that they're um, um, getting all the resources that they need to do the job that we've tasked them with. But I would say probably 100 volunteers mm. throughout the country right now. And there are, I mean, we have some stay-at-home dads, we have some engineers, we have a mayor, um, you know, we have so many different walks of life that is working with us to make sure that, you know, no baby dies in this country again, um, because a mother didn't have a last option or a last resort option for 100% anonymity. All these years since the 60s and 70s, group, making, you know, having people do abortion, no matter what. All these years, how much, how many people have died? I mean, babies, over 64 million. How do you recruit uh, the volunteers to help the babies in each state? We don't. Actually, they're contacting us. Huh? Yeah, we have a ton of people that contact us that want to help. And we want to encourage people to continue to do that because we're a nonprofit. We don't make money doing this. So who so we, helps you? Like I said, stay-at-home dads, engineers, stay-at-home moms. Um, we have people that go into the schools. Oh. Uh, how, how do you, do people sponsor you? You, they can. They can sponsor a, like a, a, a high school. We'll send literature to them. 
um, or a church will send church. literature to them. Yeah, yes, yes. we need to be everywhere. We need to educate. The, the people who are being so used to uh, having abortion as way of life need to be, how you say, re-educated, say, no, this is not right. Even though it's legal, we're trying to make it illegal. Well, and, and keep in mind, too, that we're trying to change the law. Yes. We're not changing the culture yet. So mm -hmm. what's going to happen is, and I am thankful that we are restricting abortion in this country to where women cannot get it. But what's going to happen when it's restricted to the point where women can't have abortions? It, it, when we have to think about this as a whole because when women, you know, go into a, a Planned Parenthood, a lot of women don't tell anyone they're going. Yeah. Maybe just one person. Yeah. So they hide the pregnancy. They never tell anyone they were pregnant and they do this all behind the scenes. Well, if they can't do that anymore, they're gonna be forced to carry these children. Right. Which, praise God for that. Or go into a back alley and, and uh, do it, you know. But what, what we need to, to remember is we have to continue to educate these women on good choices. Not just a good choice for their child, but a good choice to not have sex outside of marriage, mm. you know? And, um, but these boxes are gonna be prevalent, prevalent once we get to the point where we restrict abortion in this country. And I think that that is why baby boxes is exploding like it is right now is because we have to have that final option out there for when Roe v. Wade gets overturned. Yeah, and I hope that gets overturned. Hopefully soon. Very soon, because mm -hmm. I know Trump is working on it, right? I hope. You met him? No, I, I have not mm -hmm. met Mr. Trump. Ah. So, uh, Mayor Joe. Yes. When Monica goes out on tour, you do go on tour. I do. Mm hmm To talk about the boxes, do you join up with her or you stay at home? I don't have the opportunity to visit her or to tour with her every time, but I do tour with her. and. Uh, he it's makes amazing. it a lot easier yeah. for me when he does. Don't you have an assistant or anything like that? I do. Yeah. Besides him? <laughs> I'm usually the he's assistant. Most... You're right. I'm usually the assistant when, when I go with her. But he, He's a lot more effective than my assistant is. But <laughs> <laughs> He's strong. Yeah. Since the uh, first Safe Haven baby box was installed at Woodburn Fire Station, what else has changed in your city? What else has changed as far as... Um, as a result of the baby box mm -hmm. being installed. And you being the mayor. Yeah. Well, I think with our community, as well as other communities that are considering the baby box, they, they realize that it's that it's something that's very well needed. And a lot of people don't understand what the purpose is for it until it's explained to them. They just think, oh, you're putting babies in boxes, but really we're giving women an option to safely surrender their child. Educate. Yeah, education. Educate. So. Would um, you come to Fort Wayne to do talks here? We do. We actually were in the school a couple weeks ago, and next week we're in uh, Carroll High School. That's a good place to go. Yeah, we were in Northside a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So we, we are in the schools educating these kids, and yes. we have to be. Yeah. I, see, yeah. we never hear you doing that in the news. I was at St. Francis. I was on the news there I when know. I was at St. Francis. Yeah. Um, but we don't advertise it too much because we do so much of it. It would be, you know, for the news stations to cover us every time, it would be yeah. pretty boring for everyone to hear that <laughs> three times a week. You don't bore me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Patty. How has your town, Mayor, cooperated in helping you and your wife, Monica, with your dream of saving babies? Well, I think the support, they, they uh, um, generally support us with that. and. A lot of people I, that I talk to are, are proud of the fact that Woodburn is the first location with the baby boxes. You made history. And uh, um, they're proud that, actually they're proud that Monica is a, is a nation, national figure now, and uh, she's from Woodburn. Is she? Okay. <laughs> I'm I, a little proud too. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Bias. <laughs> Maybe a little biased. Are you still doing duties for the National Guard? I am. I am. I, I drill one weekend a month and I do my two weeks in the summer and from time to time I'll go to a school that the Army uh, pays for and, and I get some more training too. Boot camp more? Boot camp or? Oh, just like an Army school where they teach me some other skills oh. once in a while. So. Oh. 
that wow. uh, most of the time it's just the weekend weekend warrior thing. But I'm um, very proud of my military duty. And uh, is this here in Indiana that you go to? Indiana, yeah, Indiana National Guard, yeah. National Guard. He's behind a desk through the week and blowing stuff up on the weekends. <laughs> so <to speak>. do <laughs> tell. <laughs> so, being mayor, what are your duties again in Woodburn? Oh, I, I oversee the, the overall business of the city. Um, mm -hmm. I'm the, the cheerleader of the city. Uh, I talk to uh, um, uh, state officials about policies that affect our cities, and, and I go to, we actually have a, uh, what they call a round table, where us mayors get together round and collaborate. Uh, um, Arthur in the round table. Yep. King Arthur in the round table. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of, anyways. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what else? Well, um, like I said, we, we collaborate and we come up with new ideas. Um, I'm also in charge of uh, making sure our streets are safe, our streets are, uh, all the potholes are fixed, and we got new sidewalks that are safe, and make sure uh, the police department is, is uh, doing things to yeah. make sure the public is safe. You don't have crime there, do you? No, no. Oh, Woodburn thank God. Not a, uh, Maybe you should help Fort Wayne how to stop with the crime already. <laughs> Oh, wow. Um, so you're going to run again as a mayor or a candidate? Yes. This year? Yes. Yes, I am. All right. I am on the ticket this year. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what changes are going to be done in 2019 in Woodburn? Well, we were just awarded, and I'm pretty excited about this, we were just awarded the stellar communities designation our region was so we have uh, three projects that are going to be happening in the next four years which is expanding our streetscape mm. uh, new street lights decorative street lights and the, yeah like a victorian kind of yes yes love it like love the old that. old school uh, towns have you know the, the old uh, um, street lights and we're going to be upgrading the park also. We're going to get a splash pad eventually and yeah, the park's going to get the a kids. Oh yeah, yeah. The kids the kids really love that. Especially you see them in Fort Wayne mm -hmm. in the in the water park in yes. Fort Wayne. You see them all around there but especially when it gets real hot. Yeah. Caliente. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, finally for the both of you, what would you like to share with my audience about what's happening with uh, your town? or your city, and with uh, safe having baby boxes? You know, one of the things that, um, for the city, you know, if, if you come to Woodburn, because there's a box there, not just because of who we are, but people know about the safe haven law. Even just one box going into a town is education for the entire community. And it's a constant reminder that the safe haven law is in that town or that city mm -hmm. and um, and that's huge for for baby boxes because that's a proactive approach um, that's that's an approach of saying hey we're gonna do something to make sure that we don't have a dead baby in our community and it's also the education piece so I think there's a, a lot of great things that are happening um, just by putting boxes in communities so you go on TV radio TV, radio, yeah, schools. We're, social media is huge for us. We do a lot with social media. We also right now um, are in the midst of the Atea Kayser uh, Memorial Scholarship. Um, and uh, this is a scholarship that was made after a young girl lost her life. She was a volunteer of Safe Haven, and her mom is a huge volunteer of Safe Haven. And she lived in Leo, went to Leo High School. Yeah. And she was killed in a car accident in October. Uh -huh. And she loved Safe Haven Baby Boxes, loved her family, loved her friends. Um, so we named the scholarship after her, and we're giving $1,000 away on April 29th um, to one lucky winner. And what we did with that scholarship is we had these kids write how we could improve the Safe Haven Law. So one, they're in their schools talking about the Safe Haven Law, and they're also trying to help us figure out if we could do something better. You know, the community or the, um, the generation that is coming up right now, they have some great ideas. Um, so, We're um, reaching out to the, the, the next generation, the one that yeah. are kids now. Yeah, and these kids are learning more about the Safe Haven Law, and they have to research it. You know, in order to win this $1,000, they have to do a complete essay. 
and um, we're uh, right now we're in the grading period so we've got uh, applications that the committee is grading but on April 29th we're gonna give some lucky winner a thousand dollars in a Taya's name in a Taya's name in a Taya's name is this for scholarship for something for schools yeah. for schools yeah so they take that money you know when they go on to college and they use that to further their education. Atea was a 4.0 student, mm. loved school. Mm. So we want to make sure that um, with this scholarship, not only is it educating on the safe haven law, but it's also giving these kids money to further their education, which is what Atea loved. And what, what about uh, you, sir? Well, I never, <clears throat> never imagined years ago when, when Monica and I met that we'd be so heavily involved in public service, but <laughs> we both have a desire to help the communities as a whole. I like uh, uh, doing things that improve my community in Woodburn. Mm -hmm. That's why I ran for mayor and right. and I'm in the military and and Monica's definitely a, a public official also. Uh, I'm just not sorry, elected. Privately. <laughs> yeah. Tell but me. Uh, yeah. it's it's an honor to, to serve the public and and, uh, and do things that for the greater good. So what's it like being recognized? Uh so Sometimes it's hard because I like to go out with no makeup on and my, you know, sloppy clothes and somebody wants a selfie. It's like, oh, this is not a good time. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, um, it encourages me because people are listening. I understand. You know, when they see me, they, oh, that's the baby box lady. That's the safe haven law lady. Or that's, you know, and, and so they're listening to what I'm saying and they're getting it. There's no negativity when you, when they approach you. No. It's positive. You know, when we first started, the concept of baby boxes and women placing babies in boxes, I think, scared people a little bit. Now they get the concept. Now we're saving babies in boxes at fire stations. And I think people are more acceptive of that because they see it working and they see how hard we're making um, strides in the safe haven movement. Well, when you go from one to two to three abandonments a year in Indiana to zero, after our yeah. first baby box went in, that's yeah. that's that's huge. Something. Did you have a lot in Woodburn abandonment? No, 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 but we did have a surrender in Woodburn a few weeks okay. ago. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah, yes, that we was did. the one in Allen County. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I la, know. La. <laughs> Precious little. You're thing. not going to get bruises on your knuckles after this hey. interview, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, your goals for the future. Where would you like to go overseas with this, or go to Canada, or Mexico, or whatever? Because it's this pretty dominant up in Canada. You know, we will go wherever Christ will lead us. You know, That's and if true. Christ needs us in a diff different country, then we'll figure a way to get there. Because Canada is just rampant with euthanasia, baby, you know, abortions right up mm. to whatever mm -hmm. that they're trying to do in. Uh, Virginia. New York City and Virginia. Yeah, but wherever he takes us is where we will go. No, I bless you both. Thank you. Bless for, you, Patty. For coming on to my show. Thank you, Mayor Joe. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, uh, Patty, Monica. for having us. We appreciate you just as much. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you come again. I do. You invite us love back. Love your company. We, we love you. Well, we love you too, Patty. Love you we, too. we are so proud of what you're doing, girl. Well, thank you. And you too, kiddo. Thank you. So this is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. We'll see you next week. And this was a very stimulating and interesting show we just did. So God bless. God speed, my love.